I saw an interesting video that one of my family members shared with me on Instagram. Shout out to my family member, Jill. She sent this to me. And it was a dope video. The video was a group of all women judges were recently held to heard an argument in an appellate division for the Supreme Court. First time ever. The whole bench was all black women. Wow. Yeah. So I'll bring up the article and just read for it so I can get their names correct. Mm -hmm. So it says a group of black women judges recently heard an argument before the appellate division first department of the Supreme Court in the state of New York. The historic first of New York, the judges include presiding justice, Diane Renwick, hope I'm pronouncing the last name correct, Justice Tiana Kennedy, mm -hmm. Justice Marsha D. Michael, and Justice Pitt Burke. I'm pronouncing the last name. I can't pronounce the first name, so please forgive me. So that was dope to see good representation in the Supreme in the Supreme Court, which is the judiciary branch. That's the, the judicial ju branch. The yes. judicial branch. So just wanted to point that out because they said that's the first time ever the whole mm. bench was nothing but black women for the Supreme Court in the state of New York. Wow. Let me get your opinions on that, man. That's that's very big. Um, especially with everything that's going on right now. That's very big. That's a positive image we need to see and we need to hear about. Um, especially like I said, with everything going on. I think it can be also inspirational. You know what I mean? I think we need to see more images of that and more stories being told of that because it's clear and evident we don't. We 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 get to see I'm I'm not gonna audible into nothing, but I will say this. I see a lot of things on social media and nothing is positive towards each other, about each other. So I mean I mean other than inspiring things you see from like maybe like Wallow or Eric Thomas, E. T. the hip hop preacher, you don't really see any like really positive images. So I, I think I think for this, this is very much needed and big. Definitely. And mm -hmm. shout out to my family member, Jill, for sending me that because I thought that was very positive. Not too many articles on it. And I'm like, that should be blown up. Yeah. Huge. Of course it's not. Don't worry. We're going to put it out. <laughs> and I'm go, gonna, I want to go to our site. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll get I want to piggyback off this. So mm -hmm. we're still in Black History Month. And last last episode, I highlighted a historical black figure. So I'm going to piggyback off of this. So I did some homework before this. So we're also on the eve of Women History Month, which is March, literally next week. So Black History Month and Women's History Month. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you our black historical figures so you guys can research on your own. I'm going to give you the bullet points just to give some educational purpose. That person is Justice Constant Baker Motley. Justice Constant Baker Motley, born in Connecticut, 1921. This person is very important for the fight of civil rights. Since Baker Motley started her education at an HBCU at Fisk University, but would transfer to NYU, get her degree in economics in 1943. But then she will go on to receive her bachelor's in law from Columbia in 1946. While completing her degree, she was hired by Thurgood Marshall to work at the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, where she worked for over 20 years, and she was key in fighting and desegregating the South. She was a pioneer civil rights lawyer for the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, an educational fund that argued over 10 cases before the U.S. Supreme Court. She was also the first black woman to serve as a federal judge. She also served as Dr. King's lawyer. So when we hear about the fight for civil rights and some of our um, our freedom fighters needing, needing lawyers to back them, she was one of them. Motley spearheaded uh, 1960 court cases and desegregating the University of Georgia, also the University of Mississippi. There's a lot of other bullet points, but if you just look up, correct. Thank you for that graphic. Uh, yes. If you look her up, you'll get a whole whole length of information and she graduated from Columbia University. So that was me piggybacking off of the judges that we that we talked about earlier. And I thought it was important for Black History Month as well as Women's History Month to highlight that person. Got mm. anything you want to add to that? No, no, I um like I said, I, I, I like the images, the stories that, that that we're sharing on here because I think it's it's something that we need to then to showcase and display. Like I said, with everything we're seeing on social media nowadays, it's more than ever needed. Not to say there's not positive images, but a lot of the things we're doing is debating, trying to say who's proven right, but we forgetting about our history and how far we've come. 
So to see those images maybe should inspire something other than you trying to figure out how you don't want to date a bus driver. Shots fired. Right. Like stick on, like stick <laughs> yeah, on topic because this yeah, was positive, yeah, but yeah. I get you. Yeah, I mean, what are you talking about, man? I am. I didn't say nothing. I just, I, gotcha. I, I just making a point. I think it's a great thing, though. On, on, you know, on the jokes aside, it's, it's, it is because I, I, I think you know. Let me tell you, like when you do this, it's very big. Even though you know, what I mean, it might not seem like it's reaching out. It is reaching out because I remember, like in the source, in the source magazine, they used to have things where they were shouting out people of color and showing and talking about their contributions and things that they were doing and books and everything like that. That's definitely missing from the magazines. Right. And I'm not going to go into no spell, but I think when we do this, it's important because where else are you going to see this? Where else are you going to hear this from? Where reports are you going to get it from? Everybody's too busy debating about something that that's going against the culture and the people and they're not showcasing this. They're not showcasing this playing the positivity and achievements of our people. So I think this is big, and that's that's kind of the point I'm making. To give you a give you an example, like I wouldn't know who John Henry Clark is if it wasn't for the source. They were the ones that I saw this big article on this this older black guy, gentleman, and I was like, who is that? And I started reading about him. So like once time went on, I started realizing who he was, and that's how like you know I got to know who he who he is. I wouldn't have known who he was had he not been in the source, you know. So I think. The relevancy and importance of what we're doing as far as displaying this, these achievements and showcasing these individuals is extremely important because there's somebody out there watching that that's going to see this and probably keep going with it and look more deeper into it. Definitely. <clears throat> like I said, when I started it off, um, when we had that fight for civil rights, there was there was prominent figures that we know about. Mm -hmm. I, I had to look into this when I saw the initial post about the all black women judges. And I said, Hey, there had to have been a woman during, during that time period that was fighting for us and popped up Constance Motley. She was the first African American woman who was appointed federal judiciary and serve, serve as a Senate mm -hmm. in the state of New York. Like that's yeah. big during the sixties. Yeah. So salute to salute to her and thank, thank you for fighting for us during that time period and also fighting for our civil rights movement. Facts.